Hey guys, this is Craig Migliaccio from AEC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is finding the target superheat for this running R410A air conditioning system and comparing that to the total superheat measured on our gauge sets. So we do that in order to determine if the system is undercharged, correctly charged, or overcharged. Now we're going to turn this system on. So you know, I've already purged the air out of the lines right here and we have to let the system run for 15 minutes before actually checking the charge. We're gonna turn our temp meter on and we're gonna make sure that we're getting our finer measurements. And we're also gonna take our outdoor temperature as well. Now we're gonna need the outdoor temperature as well as the indoor wet bulb temperature in order to determine what the target superheat is. But what I'm gonna do is we have to let the system run for 15 minutes. So after the 15 minutes, we're going to see what our superheat is by checking the temperature on the vapor line. And we're going to have that temperature minus the saturated temperature found on our gauge. What we do is we take a pressure reading and we bring it into the R4 tonight saturated temperature at the middle of the evaporator coil inside. So we are converting pressure to saturated temperature. And this gauge phase kind of does it for us. But we're going to have to let this system run for a little bit. T2 actually goes on the vapor line right here. So you can see right now, if the system was running for 15 minutes, our temperature will be 58 degrees on the vapor line minus 42 degrees on the saturated temperature on our gauge right here. So right now it's 60 degrees. So 60 minus 42, and we're left with 18 degrees of total superheat measured at the outdoor unit. Now we have to measure total superheat at the outdoor unit because we have a fixed orifice at the indoor coil. If we had a thermostatic expansion valve like this, then we would have to check the subcoin method. And we do that with the high side gauge right here, which is the red gauge and the temperature on the liquid line. In the case of subcoin, it's a saturated temperature minus the line temperature. But for total superheat, it's the line temperature minus the saturated temperature. So now we're just going to go ahead and let the system run for 15 minutes and then we're going to check our actual superheat and we're going to go inside and measure our indoor wet bulb temperature and we're going to determine what our target superheat is. So now it's been 15 minutes of runtime, and we're going to check our superheat. So T2, which is found on the vapor line, which is the low side line, we're reading 61 degrees. And on our pressure, we're reading 130 PSIG on the outer ring. We bring that into the R4 tonight, saturated temperature in the middle of the EVAP coil, and we read 45 degrees. So 61 minus 45, and we're left with 16 degrees of total superheat. So now we need to determine what the target superheat needs to be because you cannot find it on the rating plate. Target superheat is not posted. It's a moving number. As the system runs, the wet bulb temperature inside will lower, and it's just gonna, it's gonna change the superheat, the total superheat that you're reading. So you have 80 degrees right here as an outdoor DB temp. And this is in our, our book, The Refrigerant Charging and Service Procedures for Air Conditioning, if you haven't got a chance to check that out. But we have 80 degrees here, and we can bring that in to whatever our indoor wet bulb temperature is, and it'll tell us what our target superheat is. So let's go ahead inside and check that out. We're at the indoor air handler, and we have our induct dual psychrometer. We only have one probe in there right now, and it's actually resting on the probe. So we're reading our wet bulb temperature inside the return duct. You can see that we are reading a wet bulb temperature of 63 degrees. So as you can see, our outdoor DB temp is 80.2. So 80.2, and we bring that over to 62 or 64. So we gotta get both of those measurements and just basically we're gonna take the average, which is 13. So 80 and 62 is 12 degrees is a target superheat and 80 and 64 is 14 degrees. So that's why we come up with a target superheat of 13 degrees. Now we can also do that with our quick reference cards. These are made out of polystyrene. So this side is for total superheat and this side is for subcooling and for delta T. So we're just gonna use our chart right here. This is just a mini version of that. You can also go to our website and you can use our target superheat calculator. So this is acservicetick.com slash HVAC calculators. Our indoor wet bulb temperature right here is 63 and our outdoor dry bulb is 80. And then we hit calculate and you see that our target superheat 
is 13.5 degrees. So you can use this online right there at our website at ecservicetech.com. Now let's see what our actual superheat is. As you can see, it did change a little bit. We're at about 60 degrees on our vapor line, 60 degrees minus 45, and we have 15 degrees of total superheat. It's actually lowering a little bit. So say we have 14 degrees of total superheat. So 14 degrees is slightly higher than 13 degrees, but it's very, very close. So it's within two degrees of our target superheat. So our refrigerant charge is good right now. If our actual superheat right here, say this was, say this was 68 degrees and this was 45, then that would mean that we have 23 degrees of total superheat. And that would mean that this unit is undercharged because our superheat is too high compared to our target superheat. So that's how you can tell. If our superheat, if this right here said, say it said 49 degrees, and that said 44 degrees, then that would leave us with four degrees of total superheat. And that would mean that we're overcharged because our superheat is lower than our target. Now I'm gonna switch over to our digital manifold gauge set and we're gonna measure our total superheat with that. And we're gonna use our wireless tools to determine our target superheat. Now we have our digital manifold gauge set hooked up. And I just want you to know that this side right here is the low side and you see it's connected to the blue line and that's connected to the large suction line over here. So we're reading our pressure of 125.6 and we're converting our pressure right here to our saturated temperature. This side right here is our liquid line, so that's our high side with our red hose over on our small liquid line right here. So if we convert 306 PSIG, it converts automatically to 97 degrees as a saturated temperature in the middle of the condenser coil because we have it set on r 410 a refrigerant. So you can cycle through whatever refrigerant that you're dealing with, but this one is r 410 a so then we also have our liquid line temp sensor right here, and that's 89 degrees. So we have our sat temp on our high side, 97 minus our liquid line, and that's 89 degrees. And so you have a subcooling of 7.9 degrees. So that's how this gauge set works. Over here is our low side. Our pressure is 125. It converts it automatically to a saturated temperature of 42.7 degrees in the middle of the indoor evaporator coil. Our suction line temp right here is 50.3 degrees. That's, that's on this large vapor line, which is our low side line. And we have 50.5 minus 42.8, and we're left with a actual total superheat of 7.7 .7 degrees. Now, we need to figure out what our target superheat is. In this case, it's remembering what we had last time, but I'm just gonna shut this off and turn it back on for you just so you can see what happens. Right here, you see that we are reading nothing. And what we have is our indoor wet bulb temperature. We have to turn our instrument on. This is our uh, dual induct wireless psychrometer, and it's gonna pick up our wet bulb temperature on this tool. We're gonna move that inside. We're also going to get this instrument set up, and this is reading our outdoor ambient temperature. So this is also referred to as our DB temp, and we're reading the air temperature of, well, the air going into the condenser coil here. So that's very important, and we're gonna go ahead and move this to the return inside. Our indoor wet bulb temperature is 61 degrees, and our outdoor DB temp is 82.5. So our target superheat's about nine degrees, about 8.8 .8 degrees. And so if we come over here, our actual superheat 6.3, our target is right about 8.9. So we are accurately charged. If anything, we're slightly overcharged because our superheat, our actual total superheat is lower than our target superheat. So if our actual total superheat was higher than our target, then we would be undercharged. So, so we're very close. And we wanna make sure that our total superheat over here isn't too low, it's not below say five degrees or something like that. We wanna make sure that we have a completely vapor state of the refrigerant heading into the vapor compressor. And as long as you have superheat out here and you know that your vapor compressor is safe and it's not gonna have liquid refrigerant entering it, which would damage it. So, so anyway, our compressor safety is good. Our charge is good. So we are accurately charged in this scenario. So just remember if your total superheat is higher than your target, you're undercharged. And if your total superheat is lower than your target, then you're overcharged. If you want to learn more about checking the refrigerant charge and preparing a system for refrigerant all the way through to the troubleshooting procedures, check out our book and we have the full outline available over at our website at acservicetech.com. 
We also have our thousand question workbook available there and also our answer key that comes with the workbook. So that's there to test your knowledge. It's a self-study guide. We have our quick reference polystyrene cards. So these can be used out in the field. They hold up really well. We got the PT chart, refrigerant weights, our superheat and subcooling, our troubleshooter, and also our frozen evaporator cool troubleshooting guide. Also make sure to check out our website at acsurfacetech.com. We've got a bunch of different resources there. We've got our videos, articles, we've got the podcast, we've got resources, quizzes, calculators, and a tool list. So check all that out at our website at acsurfacetech.com. Hope you enjoyed yourself and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.